Is the EU facing an existential crisis in your view? Um, I think it probably is. Um, it's pretty clear that one of the biggest member states has voted in a referendum to leave the European Union. There's no precedent for this. Yeah. Um, the European Union is not um, uh, set up as an institution where members can come and go. Um, people always describe the European Union as somehow being uh, uh, um, going one direction towards more integration. Um, people discussing European integration never really thought about disintegration. Yeah. So in many ways we're in uh, unprecedented territory. Um, and I think for those who are involved in uh, uh, European Union politics, those that are in the, in the big important jobs, um, they see this as a pretty serious moment. Uh, as okay. Doubt. And even though Britain isn't part of the, the single currency, and I think you, you said before that if, even if Italy was to go down this route of trying to, to pull out of the single currency, it, it's not that simple. I mean, that's right. I mean, there's a big difference between the UK and some other member states. Um, I've asked a lot of economists whether it's possible to leave um, the European Monetary Union. Yeah. Nobody has said yes. They've all said it's basically impossible. Uh, it would trigger a dramatic financial crisis. Um, you have to imagine that if you were a saver who had some euros in an Italian bank or a Dutch bank, um, and the country looked like it might even begin to consider the possibility of leaving the Eurozone, um, you'd be pretty worried about the value of your yeah. savings. If they would be transformed overnight into a new currency, would that currency be viable or not? So you would take your money out and put it somewhere else, in which case you would have some sort of bank run. So yeah. there's some pretty big differences between the UK and other member states. Um, having said that, um, I've always uh, argue that the best way to think about Brexit is that it's a bit like an iceberg. Um, and what I mean by an iceberg is that what we see, the tip of the iceberg, is Brexit. But lying underneath are a lot of currents of discontent uh, across Europe that yeah. raise questions about the future of the EU. Okay. Um, well, that was what I was going to come on to. Is if we can talk about what's led to this, it's almost a, a revolt mm -hmm. against the EU. Um, and the rise of populist politicians. Um, can we talk a little bit about that and then I'll, I'll ask you yeah. some questions. I think it's wrong to say that people are out in the streets demonstrating against the European Union. Yeah. Um, if you look at opinion polls, there was a recent um, um, study done by a Eurobarometer, which is the EU's sort of polling um, machine, and uh, the figures for attitudes towards the European Union were uh, pretty good. Um, and I think um, we have to differentiate between people's discontent with politics, mm -hmm. with their own politicians, essentially, their own national governments, and the European Union. Yeah. Um, now, what we have across Europe is a revolt against the establishment. There's no doubt. Um, a lot of parties that used to be on the margins, uh, very anti-establishment parties, have in many cases become very mainstream. Um, if you look at the Five Star Movement in Italy, for instance, they are the biggest party in Italy. Um, they could become the biggest party after elections next year and they could try and form a government. So yes. these parties are at the heart of, uh, of uh, national politics. Now, the reason why that's a threat for the European Union is that the EU, at the end of the day, is basically made up of national governments. Yeah. And it rests on the authority and the legitimacy of those national governments. And if, if things are going wrong at the national level, that will inevitably feed into um, to, to, to the EU and will uh, transform in lots of ways or maybe undo the EU as we know it. If we could just come back a bit to the, the, the uh, rise of populist parties, so you talked about the Five Star Movement in Italy and um, we've got uh, Nigel Farage and UKIP in this country. There's a, there's a degree of a celebrity involved in these parties and for some reason they seem to be very good at getting the public to identify with them. And is this healthy? And I was just, is there, do they have a real point and is it a healthy direction? Because they, as you're saying they, they really are becoming mainstream. So. Well I think um, they represent for me the failure of mainstream 
polit uh, politics and yeah. politicians and political parties to um, adequately represent the interests of, uh, of people. Yeah. Um, I think people are not um, interested in the Five Star Movement or in UKIP simply because these people are celebrities. Um, what they represent insofar as they are celebrities uh, so in Italy, the leader of the Five Star Movement, Grillo, was a very famous comedian, mm -hmm. uh, very well known. What they represent is are figures who are not part of the political bubble uh, in uh, in uh, uh, in these countries. It's like a voice, yeah, outside yeah. of the mainstream, outside of the establishment. So they're anti-politicians in some respects. Yes, that's right. Um, they represent just um, um, somebody who's not tainted with this feeling of either corruption or simply pursuing their own interests yeah. or being cut off from what you know uh, normal people think about.